Welcome back to Nomad Boat Building. I'm Mark Rudin, and we've been building the Catalina Wherry. The boat is finally finished, so today we're going to look at some more of the little details, discuss a few things I could have done differently, and then we're going to shove the boat out the door so it can go on to its new home. So please join me for the very last episode of Building the Catalina Wherry. Well, if you've been with me for any length of time, you know there's, you know, there's no shortage of me second-guessing my choices. There are some choices that were made that I don't know if I would make them myself again. Joe wanted these thwart risers. I can understand that. He likes the idea of being able to sort of hang on to them while he moves around in the boat. But they add weight, you know, they add 10 pounds to the boat on their own. And in order to install those, we had to put frames in the boat. So that adds a bit of weight and certainly adds some complexity. I wish I'd made these frames a little wider. They're about three quarters of an inch wide or even just a hair shy of that. I kind of feel like I would have liked a little more meat for these um, thwart riser fasteners to hang on to. Now it just so happens somebody walked in the door literally like the day I, before I wanted to start doing these frames with a whole bunch of yellow cedar for sale. There was just enough to do that job. Um, it was just a little bit on the lean side and I, the price was cheap. So I picked it up, I figured I'd save Joe a couple of bucks. And I mean, it worked fine, but uh, I would have liked just a, a little more girth to them, I think. These open gunnels, you can't argue that open blocked gunnels like this add a lot of stiffness to a boat. And you know, you're basically creating an I-beam, right? And the wider that I-beam is, the wider the web is, the stiffer it's going to be. So uh, I guess that's good, but they, they are, consume so much time and effort putting these things in you know they're fiddly they're hard to get to position right where you want them and then fastening them in place is always a little bit of a challenge you need to then put an in whale on them that has to marry up with them thickness wise and that doesn't always work out exactly right and then we still have cleaning up glue around these little tiny blocks and then we have painting around these little blocks painting and varnish every time you run a brush across this gunnel assembly, a little bit of varnish is going to want to run down these edges and drip down on the inside. So you got to be really careful throughout the whole finishing process how you finish it. You got to be careful to do brush strokes that just start in the middle of that blocking and work towards the end so that you don't drag a bunch of wet material down across the inside. And then you got to get in there with a little brush and do the inside. And then if you've got two different coloring schemes like here we've got varnish and then paint I got to go in there and tape around all of that too in order to get a good clean finish it's just so many little things that are taken up by this one little detail and I think people think they're just going to tie stuff off to here and I just don't think it's the right answer I would have preferred to just go solid in whale all the way through and I would have beveled off the bottom of that in whale so that if you tip the boat on its side or upside down, water isn't able to stand on the bottom. It's got to run off and exit the boat. I think that's an important little detail. Um, and we could have made it a deep, a deep in whale too. We could have made it two inches deep quite easily to give, you know, keep the same amount of stiffness you see right here. And I think if you just make it out of soft wood like red or yellow cedar or even fur, um, we would have saved on weight. You could always add a little hardwood trim to the inboard corner just to make it a little tougher. We could have made it uh, a smaller construction up here towards the bow. And as we came down to the rowing positions, we could have swelled it out into a wider shelf that ran through that the, carried the, the oar locks. Maybe I shouldn't have done the, this whole console because that adds weight. There's probably 20 pounds there all told. can't remember what the exact numbers are. They're like seven, no, it's 15 pounds. Seven pounds per per unit. Seven pounds for the panel, seven pounds for the tray. Maybe we should have just done those out of red cedar. I mean, that could still get done, you know. We tried this one thing. I tried to keep the effort on it down as low as possible. It's, it's kind of hard to do that, but we came in just under 200 pounds all in, just a couple of pounds below that. 
This is not the kind of boat you want to put on a roof rack. It's 200 pounds. It's a lot of boat to get up there. You know, I see people with like campers, pickup truck uh, campers, and I see these aluminum skiffs sitting on the tops of these things. They're like 15 feet in the air. And I always wonder like, how on earth do you get those things up there? And why would you want to hump something up to the top of your roof like that all the time? That seems like a complete nightmare. Seems like a trailer is a much simpler thing to drag around. Anyhow, I mean, to each his own, right? Chacun en son goût, as we say around these parts. That means uh, to each his own. Ultimately, I think we get a little so hung up on weight. I certainly do. And when Joe is out there in the Pacific swells with this thing, he will be happy with a little extra weight. Uh, certainly, he's not going to get blown around so much by the wind with a little extra weight, and he's going to... Uh, not be getting jostled by the chop quite as badly. So all those things will work in his favor. And that's sometimes the important thing. We put so much emphasis on trying to build a boat that's so light with the idea of getting of dealing with the boat when it's not in the water that sometimes we forget that there's some advantages to a heavier, more traditional boat. So our main thwart is really quite big and that was by the request of the customer. Joe likes to use this big sort of uh, gel cushioned seat and uh, he likes sitting up quite high. But he wanted something that was even bigger actually, but I talked him down to this size. Anyhow, you know, this is a, quite a, a beamy seat. We're like a good solid 18 inches across here. And so the idea is Joe also wanted to have a forward rowing position, but he didn't want that seat in his way. He wanted to be able to sort of get up to the bow of the boat without being having to trip over another seat. So with this, he can simply swing his legs around to the other side and take a walk up to the front. But when he needs to row from the front position, this comes off and just drops up forward here, knocks, notches around a couple of the frames to hold it in place. It's good and rigid. Joe can do his rowing from up there. And now this console, I've been calling it sometimes, gives him a place for doing all sorts of other stuff. He can keep maps in here, charts. He can uh, use this as a cooking area. He's got a little couple side panels here that he can put some stuff into that won't roll across the boat if, the, if things are rocking, keep some power bars there or whatever. And this has got drains in the bottom. So if he spills anything in here, it's just gonna drain right on through. The console also has little sloped sides here. So if anything falls on here, it drains down and it sneaks right around these little baffles and out the same drain holes that the bottom has. Now this is repositionable. We got about two inches of travel to sort of tweak it a little bit. And to make that easier, we've instead of giving ourselves fasteners down through the port and into the riser, we've made J hooks that wrap around the bottom of the riser. And so there's no fasteners penetrating that riser itself. So he's got a really strong, secure fastening down to that riser, but he can still reposition this thwart easily. Or if he decides that this is not working for him, he can pull that out easily. He could repurpose these J hooks into some new thwart materials and he could come up with something different. I quite like that idea. I think I might use these J hooks again in the future. They took a little bit of effort to make, but I, I love the fact that I didn't have to drill holes through the risers to make them work. There's no grid spot in a riser to drill a hole and put in a large enough fastener to do the job that I'm happy with. So we've got our act foot stretcher here. My customer wanted something he could really plant his full feet on. We've given it two positions here to sit on and it had to jump over top of our lashing rail. Had I thought about this earlier, I might have just ended the lashing rail here and we could have done something a little different with this stretcher. We probably could have made it a bit lower, but the lashing rail was already in by the time I got to this portion of the job. And so we had to find a workaround, but there's sort of an advantage to that. And that is I found this thing could be parked like this and you could put some blocking underneath here, be it your PFD or whatever you have going on, a bailing can or something. And you could use this as a seat um, because my client is gonna wanna be able to sit here and eat his lunch. Now, another happy mistake was that I found that the movable thwart actually fits back here as an aft seat really nicely. So in a pinch, uh, if you need to put a passenger back here, you could do that simply by moving this seat here. And I, quite, I think that's kind of cool. 
Now the forward rowing position also gets a stretcher. This is just a simple one that's sitting down low. We've got two positions for it again. And this is one that Joe can get out of the way very easily if he needs to. Now I quite like the idea of these lashing rails down here. Joe can store gear against the side of the boat and leave the center portion free for movement. And so that just gives him one more place to lash things easily. He is even talking about putting foam flotation in here so he could be using bungee cords or uh, seine twine or something like that to hold it in. Or he could just be storing gear on the sides. Now we've added a liner or a grommet to the bow of the boat here. And this goes right through a portion of the stem and then I put a big amount of blocking in behind there. So this is a really solid connection. And this is so that we can run an anchor line from here. We could run a trailering line from here, like the trailer strap could, could fasten on here with the addition of a little rope strop. And one thing you can do is you can have in your boat a length of rope uh, or line and you put a stopper knot on the end so what we've got here is a, a wall and crown knot and so it just creates a really big mass and of course this is a very short piece but you could have one that's say six or ten feet long and you can just quickly run that through there to have as a painter line in order to tie this boat off to a dock without having to have one that's flopping around in the boat all the time so that's just a really quick way to sort of be able to tie off very quickly you could even get away with a short tow with a stopper knot like this. Or of course you could just take this out and you could tie it off into a more useful knot like a bowline or some such thing. So this is a nice clean way to sort of create a connection at the bow of your boat without having a bolt running right through the stem. Putting a bolt through the stem is perfectly fine but it can be difficult to find one that is long enough, especially if you want to work in bronze. It's also difficult to put a bolt hole through here really cleanly and landing on the center line, both front and back, if you don't do it early in the process of building. So I like this solution. It's 100% guaranteed to be a good quality connection here. Uh, this puts the line down low, where it's a good, good height for tr both trailering and anchoring and towing, because you don't want to tow up from the top of the stem here. You don't really want to anchor from the top of the stem. That's really not as ideal as getting that down low to where it's closer to the water line. And especially if you're trying to haul a boat up onto the beach with a piece of line or a block and tackle, you want to pick that up down low where it's going to lift that bow up a little bit and keep it from digging into the beach compared to having something fastened up high like here. Back here at the transom, we've got our two grommet holes as well. And again, I'll use this piece of line to demonstrate how we can use these. So I'll just pass the line through from the inside and the stopper knot here will come up hard inside that hole, of course, and make it secure. And one of the things Joe wanted to be able to do is to be able to climb back on board the boat or reboard it from in the water over the stern in rough water. So you could do that if you had this set up already with, you could put a little piece of pipe on here or something to uh, weight this down so that it hangs down low. The other part is passed through and tied off with another stopper knot on the inside, a temporary one like a figure eight knot. And now you've got some place you can get your foot onto so you can get yourself up and over the transom. If you wanted to use a drogue, which is like a sea anchor off the stern, well, this is a perfect place to attach it right here. You just clip right on and deploy your drogue. This is a really good solid attachment without it coming up and over the shear, minimal chafing and all that sort of stuff too. Then of course we can use just the single line as a painter again. We can use this to just tie off to a dock or another boat or whatever we need to do. It keeps the whole shear line free of obstructions. We don't have cleats hanging up here. Um, it's not a good idea to fasten these things necessarily to the in whales or the shear blocking. I mean, you certainly could, but it's less ideal than this. There's probably a lot less chafe going through this hole than there is tying off somewhere along the shear line. And of course, if you wanted to have all that stuff on the inside, you could just have decorative knots hanging at the back end. So there's our wall and crown knot on one side. Over here, you could do a figure eight knot. And that's okay. That would seize up like so. Or we could do a double overhand knot as another great stopper knot. It's very simple to do. You just do your regular overhand knot, but then you pass your bitter end through there 
that loop again so it doubles over and makes for a bigger knot that doesn't jam up as easily, that's easier to untie. So there we go, they both have similar uh, profiles in terms of the mass of the knot there. Now we've got a strop that can come over the transom and get used any way you like. And doing this is quite easy, you can just break the knot easily and release it and then pull it through. Now we didn't put floorboards in here and I kind of wish we did in a way just because I'd like to see a more protective bottom in there. But um, Joe might do that. But I was thinking also there's this material I have here. I forget the name of this material exactly. But it is, um, it's a natural cork material. It's like a cork and rubber uh, conglomerate. It's basically linoleum. And uh, it's made for boats. It's made as an anti-skid deck. It's not cheap, but it's nice stuff. And I mean, you can even sort of smell the, it's got a very particular <laughs> rubbery, corky smell to it. But anyway, I was thinking putting this down in the bottom of the boat might be pretty cool. That could do the job of giving him sort of a, a high wear bottom that's actually relatively lightweight and easy to deal with. Okay, I want to thank Total Boat for helping us out on this build. Now, they donated a bunch of products for us to try out, um, and I was under no obligation to use them in a video or even mention them in the video, but they did me a favor, so I'm going to do them a favor and um, just say that I actually had a pretty good experience with using the Total Boat products, my first time using the stuff. Now, it wasn't without some little hiccups. However, I think that's the nature of trying any new product is it can take a while before you get a feel for how that product works and the best way to apply it. And, um, and there are always going to be some little hiccups along the way a lot of the time, especially if the product is quite different than something you're used to. So in the case of the uh, Total Boat epoxies, they worked pretty good. I really loved using the Thixo low viscosity epoxy in a tube here and we set that one up with um, the mixing nozzle and a little brush on the end if you recall and for wetting out the laps for our planking this was just ideal. It did a beautiful job and made that job really really fast. Using the thickened epoxy that worked pretty good too, although I'm not a huge fan of the consistency of the thickened epoxy uh, that comes out of these tubes. It's a little bit not quite what I like a lot of the time, and I and I don't really like the fact that it it's a bit like colorless, so if you're using it in a joint that's going to show, it's not really the, the best color. It doesn't have any brown in it or anything like that. But uh, just the same, it's certainly a time saver. Uh, there is a certain wastefulness to using these products in a caulking tube, however, I mean that is something you need to accept and you use them in order to sort of gain some convenience. Uh, the Total Boat Total Fair, this is basically a thickened epoxy, a thickened fairing compound, so we're using it for filling holes uh, like screw heads and pinholes and things like that, and I'm sure you could use it for fairing out larger areas too. Uh, this was great. This worked really, really nicely. It mixes up really easily. It sands easily. Uh, I really enjoyed using this product quite a bit, and I would absolutely use this one again. There's another product made by All Grip, which is called All Fair. Very comparable. Uh, what The thing about the All Fair though is it only comes in fairly large quantities, whereas this does come in these smaller pots. So for the home builder, this is perfect. I mean, I've gone through on this project less than half of this kit here on this particular project. The Total Boat Lust Varnishes. This stuff is a little smellier than I like for my personal use because my shop's in my home and I need to control fumes. And so this is a little smellier than I can tolerate using in my particular workspace, so I was varnishing outside with it. Now, that said, when I was varnishing, there was snow on the ground, and this stuff was curing on me cleanly overnight for sure, because I was often throwing it on near the end of the day. And for that, those kinds of temperatures and the high humidity I was having, I was amazed at how nicely this stuff cured under those conditions. And um, I used the Total Boat, the, the matte finish as our, my top coat on this project, and I really love how that looks. 
man, it just, it hides all the evils, right? Any little sort of pinholes and stuff that would show up in a gloss, it just disappears with the matte. I would use this again. I really quite like the effect that it has. Now the Total Boat Elixir was what we used on the interior and exterior of the boat. Um, in general, I would give this pretty good marks. So the things I don't like about it is I felt the opacity of it is kind of low. So when you put it on, you can kind of see through a little bit too easily and it takes a few too many coats than I like to fill. The other thing I don't like about it is in application, it just feels a bit weird. It doesn't flow out like an oil base paint does. So it was hard to feel whether or not I was doing the right thing when I was laying it on. But on the flip side, on the positive side, it dries really fast, recoats really fast. For a waterborne product, it sands out really nicely. And uh, what I was really impressed with was how well it flattened out. Now I say that because oil-based paints, when you put them on, you'll see brush strokes, and then a few moments later, you'll see them sort of disappear, and you know, you, know, you get a glossy finish. So that doesn't happen with this exactly. But when you come back, whatever texture you you saw when it was applied, that seems to disappear with this in much the same way but it's almost like it shrinks back as opposed to flows out. So I found that kind of curious and I like it gave me a really, a, quite a nice finish. Now it's not glossy. It is a definitely a low luster finish, but I don't mind that because I quite like that kind of character. So I would definitely use this again. I would not use it without a color matched primer underneath it because I felt that yeah, too many coats required to to get a uh, to get a, a solid color. Um, I love the color that we created with the blue. Now I mixed classic Weller blue with about 25% of their oyster white in order to get the color that we ended up using in the boat, and I I think it's gorgeous. Um, the, the 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 blue right out of the bottle I think was just way too too punchy for my liking. I guess there's some people out there that will like it, but uh, a little too 1980s if you ask me. But um, mixed down, tinted down a little bit with the white. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I love it. So the last thing that we did that was quite experimental was using polymer nails. And uh, I used a, a gun here from Omer and the nails were Raptor nails. Um, so you need a proprietary gun to use these nails, or so I am told by the manufacturer. I've heard some people say that you could stick these nails into any old brad nailer. The ones that did say they could do it when I put out the word about this, they said, yeah, but you know, you get misfires like every couple of nails that misfires or something like that. Now I do feel like this is a useful tool in combination with epoxy. It didn't do the thing that I wanted it to do, which was when I was first talking with a Raptor rep many years ago, he said, you use these nails, you pop them in and you just sand off the heads and you're done, you know, and you get a nice clean finish. And I found that wasn't the case. They, the, there was always some sort of pinholes that needed filling when you were done with these a lot of the time. Um, and you can't control the depth of these guys. There's no, there's no depth control on the gun, which I think is a downside. Now I have used that a lot in the shop for sort of quick and dirty jig, jig up operations. And when I'm making parts in multiples to be broken apart, if, if the finish isn't a concern, I'm using that stuff to pin things together that I can then cut out together and break apart later on. So it has become a great, great tool in the workshop. I have to say that. So all in all, this whole boat was an experiment in trying a few different approaches to building that I don't usually use. We used spraying with the uh, Total Boat Elixir. Mixed feelings about that. I was having trouble getting it through the gun that I had. Um, I think it would work great if I had a different gun and if I had uh, a different understanding of the setup of, of air guns. And I did have an expert in air guns actually come and talk to me afterwards and uh, look at my setup and explain a few things that I could have done to improve my results. So I, all that, all in all though, I did manage to get it through my gun and I did get some good results, I think. So um, I'll give it sort of high marks for that. I just had trouble getting it thinned out enough while remaining within the manufacturer's specs for thinning it. 
So once again, big thanks to Total Boat for uh, supplying some of these products for us to try out. I appreciate that. So the other company that has sent me some stuff to try out is Starbon. And again, I wasn't under any obligation to uh, mention or display these products in the videos. Um, but I'm going to do it anyway because I've actually found them to be really good. And cyanoacrylate glues, there's tons of them out there. And I've tried a bunch of different ones. And this one does actually stand out against the crowd for a few different reasons. First of all, it cures just a little bit slower than some, which you might think is a negative, but if you're trying to position something carefully, it gives you that second of re reposition ability that other cyanoacrylate glues don't give. And what I particularly like about the accelerator is it's a little, um, when you use the accelerator, it's a little more kindly on the finished product. So some accelerators, if you hit them too hard, hit the glue too hard with them, they foam up white. They kind of, it's almost like they burn. There's too much of a chemical reaction. This is a lot milder. And so when you use it, you don't get that same reaction. It tends to sort of stay nice and clear, which is exactly what you want. So these guys not only send you extra caps, but then they also send you a bunch of little micro tips as well for sneak it into nooks and crannies. I think that's fantastic. Absolutely top marks to Starbon for making those uh, little minor improvements over the regular products. Okay, well here we are. This is the thing that started off this whole design, which was the transom. Now, the whole process started off with our customer Joe sending me an email with a, a photograph taken from John Gardner's Building Plastic Small Craft. The boat in particular that he was interested in is this one on the right. The one on the left is the one that we actually have lines for. The one on the right is a little different. So Joe is particularly captivated by the shape of this transom and I did my best to try and give him exactly that. Now, the difference being that I've got one photograph of the boat only. It's pretty grainy. The boat's sitting at a, at a three quarter angle and Joe also specified a transom rake that I don't think actually represents what we see here in the photograph. So I had two conflicting things to try and create. A transom that looks like that one does from the rear or from that quarter and a different rake to the transom. So trying to extrapolate that information and then design a whole boat around the shape of that transom, that was really tricky. Trickier than I expected it to be. But nonetheless, I, I think what he got here looks great. They may not match that photograph exactly, but I think it's still a really pleasing looking transom uh, all on its own. And I think the rest of the boat has a ton of character. I think Joe's going to really like it. I can't wait to see pictures of him out there rolling this thing off the coast of Los Angeles around Catalina Island, for which this boat was named. Catalina Wary, she's all done. She's ready to launch. Joe's coming to pick it up today, and I won't be here for it, unfortunately. That kind of sucks, but uh, it is what it is, you know? Here we go. I want to thank all of you for watching. I want to thank everybody who's helped support me along the way with making these videos and making these boats. My customers, those of you on Patreon, those of you who are just watching on YouTube or Instagram or wherever. It's important to me that everybody uh, shares in this process, that I share the skills that I've developed with people, share techniques, share problems, share solutions. But when you see somebody who's working on something by hand, don't take it for granted. You probably, if you're watching this, you probably don't, but there are people like myself that we dedicate a really significant portion of our lives to learning how to make things like this. And I guarantee none of us really do it for money. We need to make money to, in order to stay alive, pay the rent, keep a roof over our head, and we'll, we often won't we'll try and turn to trying to use this activity to generate money, but uh, I don't think any of us really do it for money. I don't even like charging for the boats, to be honest be happy if I could just send them out the door for free. Catch you on the next build. Ciao for now.